when you hear the perfect lyric attached to the perfect melody, you know it. It, it hits an emotional chord in, inside you. You feel it. Mm -hmm. It's often the most effortless. The one that feels the, the best lyrics, I think something like the, the real building lyrics, lyricists who write these, just these gorgeous, simple things that just seem like they always existed. Like they're just yeah. so... Yeah. It's so effortless, even though we know those people probably sat there and changed little thing by little thing until it all just laid in it perfectly. And sometimes I think it's actually that when you you, for, you forget that anyone wrote this, that's when a, a great lyric is happening. You're just, it's just a part of the melody. And that's that's the sweet spot. If you kind of forget that words were put into it, that it's just, yeah. it's part of it. I mean, can, oh. you even, can you even imagine another melody to You Can't Hurry Love? You can't even yeah. imagine simple lyrics um but let's be honest sometimes you write lyrics and you're like "Ooh, i cannot <laughs> believe i just said that you know you're just like <laughs> your own horn I, I really do that all the time where i'm like wait a minute what like that was awesome and um i think that comes from just being a fan of lyrics like just like reading i i can like like you said michael when you were a kid like going through like Right, reading liner notes. I knew every songwriter. I know every lyric. I knew who were good writers before I even thought to write a lyric myself. So if I'm reading Joni Mitchell's lyrics, I'm like, "This, what does this mean, Mom? What does this mean? Like, what does I if I drink? I could drink a case of you. Like, what does that mean?" She's like, "What are you talking about? You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> what are you who, you start talking about drinking?" But I um. I did that all the time. So I, it's all, I think a big thing for people, especially if you're wanting to become a better lyricist, I think reading more just in general, just in general, not, not just lyrics, but lyrics, especially, but if, when you read more than your, it opens your mind to different phrasing, different ways to, um, process. And, um, my, my, my college, uh, was on that floor. Every time I went to a person's house that had secular music, and record collections because we had only gospel and I would feel so liberated when I read a curse word. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, Prince, do you know what Prince said on <laughs> DMSR? You know, so I was really, um, uh, and still like, I'm, I'm sick about there not being liner notes. Uh, I don't understand it, you know? So then, you know, we go and I, I go and I just figure out what people are saying sometimes. And there's a lot less of that, to be honest, um, um, in popular music. So when I do see it, it's, it's almost like running into an alien and you recognize it and you're like, oh my God, can you believe that this person is writing like that today? You know, so I'm sorry, I probably rambling. <laughs> no, that's so great. That's, I was, I was going to, the other thing that, I, that made me think of is, is sort of the flip side of that is, is I always, because I, I, I can get very like focused and just on the page a little bit is to get away from the page and listen to yourself is mm -hmm. I always now record myself saying it out loud or sing, singing it with the melody again and again, because it's an, this is a, it's an oral thing. It's about yeah. hearing. And so if you get too lost in the reading of it and the cleverness that you've put down the page, but you can't, it just doesn't sound right. It's a whole different thing. So it's always about listening and recording and recording and recording and listening it back to yourself and listening it back and even just saying it, you know, I'm the crazy person walking down Culver City, you know, <laughs> down the street, like talking to myself because I'm yeah. hearing the writing and that's, yeah, you know. Absolutely.